So, hi everyone, we are group 12, and our topic for today is all about Rother and Michelle's Cognitive Social Learning Theory. Biography of Rother Author of Locus of Control Scale and born in Brooklyn on October 22, 1916, and third and oldest son of Jewish immigrants, his family is not very religious and was drafted into the army and spent more than three years as an army of psychologists during World War II and served as the president of Eastern Psychological Association and the divisions of social and personality and clinical psychology of the American Psychological Association or EPA. In high school, he became familiar with the writings of Freud and Adler and in 1941, received a PhD in clinical psychology from Indiana University and published Social Learning and Clinical Psychology in 1954 and moved to the University of Connecticut in 1963 and has remained there since his retirement. And the next one is about Introduction to Rutter's Social Learning Theory. The rest on five hypotheses. It's about humans interact with their meaningful environments, that is, human behavior stems from the interaction of environmental and personal factors. And human personality is learned, which suggests that it can be changed or modified as long as people are capable of learning. And personality has a basic unity, suggesting that personality has some basic stability and motivation is goal-directed, and people are capable of anticipating events, and thus they are capable of changing their environment and their personality. And the next one is about predicting specific behaviors. Ruther suggested four variables that must be analyzed in order to make accurate predictions in any specific situation. These variables are behavior potential, expectancy, enforcement value, and the psychological situation. The first one is behavior potential. Behavior potential is the possibility that a particular response will occur at a given time and place in relation to its likely enforcement. The second one is expectancy. People's expectancy in any given situation is their confidence that a particular reinforcement will follow a specific behavior in a specific situation or situations. Expectancies can be either general or specific and the overall likelihood of success is a function of both generalized and specific expectancies. The third one is the resportsment value. Resportsment value is a person's preference for any particular reinforcement over other resportsment if all are equally likely to occur. Internal resportsment is the individual's re perception of an event, whereas external reinforcement refers to society's evaluation of an event. Reinforcement, re reinforcement sequences suggest that the value of an event is a function of one's expectation that a particular reinforcement will lead to future re reinforcements. And the fourth one is psychological situation. The psychological situation is that part of the external and internal world to which a person is responding. And behavior is a function of the interaction of people with their meaningful environment. Basic prediction formula. Hypothetically, in any specific situation, behavior can be predicted by the basic prediction formula, which states that the potential for a behavior to occur in a particular situation in relation to a given enforcement is a function of people's expectancy that their behavior will be followed by their reinforcement in that situation. And the next one is about predicting general behavior. The basic prediction is to specific to give clues about how a person will generally behave. Generalized expectancies and to make more generalized predictions of behavior, one must know people's generalized expectancies or their expectations based on similar past experiences 
that a given behavior will be reinforced. And generalized expectancies include people's needs that is, behaviors that move them toward a goal. And the next one is about needs. Needs refer to functionally related categories of behaviors. Ruther listed six broad, broad categories of needs, with each need being related to behaviors that lead to the same or similar reinforcement. The first one is recognition, status, refers to the need to excel, to achieve, and to have others recognize one's worth. The second is the dominance, is the need to control the behavior of others, to be in charge, or to gain power over others. Third one is independence, is the need to be free from the domination of others. Fourth, protection dependence, is the need to have others take care of us and to protect us from harm. Fifth, Love and affection are needs to be warmly accepted by others and to be held in friendly regard. And six, physical comfort includes those behaviors aimed at securing food, good health, and physical security. And the next one is all about the three need components. Are first, need potential, or the possible occurrences of a set of functionally related behaviors directed towards the satisfaction of similar goals. Second, freedom of movement or a person's overall expectation of being reinforced for performing those behaviors that are directed towards satisfying some general need. And third, need value or the extent to which people prepare one set of reinforcements to another. Need components are analogous to the more specific concepts of behavior potential, expectancy, and reinforcement value. And the next one is about general prediction formula. General prediction formula. The general prediction formula states that need potential is a function of freedom of movement and need value. And Reuters' two most famous scales for measuring generalized expectancies are the internal external control scale and the interpersonal trust scale. An internal and external control of reinforcement is the external 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 control scale or the popularly called locus of control scale attempts to measure the degree to which people perceive a casual relationship between their own efforts and environmental consequences. Interpersonal trust scale is the measures the extent to which a person expects the word or promise of another person to be true. So the next slide is all about the maladaptive behavior. So it refers to any persistent behavior that fails to move a person closer to a desired goal. So ayon kay Rotary, ito yung mga behavior or mga bagay or characteristics na meron ng isang tao na kung saan ito ang nagiging dahilan upang hindi nila makamit yung mga bagay na gusto nila. So say for example, ako, kunwari ako, um, gusto ko maging isang um, psychologist ano, after few years, tapos dahil sa aking behavior na masyado akong short-tempered, kunwari, tapos hindi ako sanay or hindi ko gusto na nakikinig ako sa ibang tao. So, ayun yung magiging isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit hindi ko maabot yung goal na maging isang psychologist. So, maladjusted individuals are characterized by unrealistic goals, inappropriate behaviors, inadequate skills, or unreasonably low expectancy of being able to execute the behaviors necessary for positive reinforcement. So, yung mga maladjusted individuals na tinatawag ay um, sila yung mga tao na mayroong unrealistic goals, ganun. So, say for example na yung mga goals natin sa buhay na alam naman natin na masyadong, kumbaga, parang hindi na natin maaabot or hindi na siya ganun ka makatotohanan. Tapos yung inappropriate behaviors naman, yung kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina na yung mga behaviors na hindi naman dapat natin um, tinataglay para makamit yung isang goal. 
at yung unreasonably low expectancies of being able to execute the behaviors necessary for positive reinforcement. So, ito yung mga bagay na parang masyado na tayong nagiging negative. Kaya naman, hindi na natin masyado ang um, nagagawa yung mga behaviors and movements na dapat natin magawa para makamit natin yung isang specific na goal. So, the next one is the psychotherapy. So, dito pumapaloob na kung ano ba yung epekto ng pagbabaga ng isang behavior depende sa kung sino yung naka-interact natin na tao. So, ang goal ng Rutter's therapy is to bring freedom of movement and need value into harmony. Thus, reducing defensive and avoidance behaviors. So, naniniwala si Rutter na makakatulong yung psychotherapy para maalis natin yung maladaptive behaviors na meron tayo. So, ang two basic ways para makamit natin or maaccomplish natin yung therapeutic goal ay changing the importance of goals and eliminating unrealistically low expectancies for success. So, kapag sinabi natin na changing goals, ito yung dito pumapasok yung role ng therapist is mapabagay yung pananaw ng kanilang patient na kung saan um, kailangan nila mag-set ng goals na dapat ay realistic lamang imbes na masyadong unrealistic para naman hindi sila ma-frustrate at the end of the day if ever na hindi nila ma-reach yung kanilang goal. So, kailangan din na ma um, paintindi ng isang therapist na Ang higit pa sa dalawang goal ay masyadong magiging komplikado kaya it's advisable na isa lang muna yung ating goal para isa-isa lang natin sila i-reach para mas mapadali yung process ng pag-reach natin ng goal. So, ang pangalawang basic way ay ang eliminating low expectancies na kung saan kailangan paalisin ng therapist yung pagiging negative ng isang patient. So, meron kasing mga um, tao na masyado silang negative kasi kunwari um, hindi nila na-analyze ng maayos yung isang specific na situation kaya ang nasa isip na agad nila ay mag-fail sila or hindi nila maaabot yung kanilang goal doon. Tapos, ayan. So, kailangan natin ng guidance ng isang therapist para naman um, maalas sa utak natin yung pagiging negative natin in a way na mas mapapadali natin yung pag-abot ng ating goals. So, before discussing the theory of Walter Michel, let's just have a quick background around about him. So, he is the second son of upper middle class parents. He was born on February 22, 1930 in Vienna. So, he has a brother named Shudor, who later became a philosopher of science and grew up in a pleasant environment only a short distance from Freud's home. So, kapit-bahay daw pala nila si Freud noon. And then, Michelle family fled Austria and moved to US when Nazis invaded Austria in 1938. So, doon na nila pinagpatuloy ang kanilang buhay as well as ang pag-aaral ni um, Walter. So, nung magkasakit yung tatay niya, kinailangan niyang humanap ng trabaho para masuportahan yung needs niya sa pag-aaral as well as yung uh, needs niya pang araw-araw. So, apparently naman, nung nakapasok na siya sa uh, New York University, doon niya na pinagpatuloy yung pagiging passionate niya sa art at saka sa psychology at the same time. Okay, so let us now proceed with the background of Cognitive Affective Personality System. So, for some theorists like Hans Eisneck and Gordon Alport, they believe that behavior is mostly a product of relatively stable personality trait. However, Walter Michel objected to this assumption. So, Michel, Michel's early research led him to believe that behavior was largely a function of the situation. So, for him, in order to predict personal behavior, we must not uh, look into a certain trait that we must consider the situation. Michelle saw that both layperson and professional psychologist seems to intuitively believe that people's behavior is relatively consistent, yet empirical evidence suggests much variability in behavior, a situation Michelle called the consistency paradox. Okay, so in trait psychology, if you are an extroverted person, then you are extroverted in all situations. However, according to Walter, there might be a situation where you are sociable, but there are also a situation that you are quiet. So this means that behavior change over time. 
if the situation changes, then the behavior might change as well. So, situation A is different from situation B. That's why it is a paradox. So, you are, in, you are consistently different in various situations. So, as we go along with our discussions, we were able to understand uh, how this um, theory differs from other theories na na-discuss na natin dati. So, this theory of Walter Michel, pinahahalagahan niya yung um, concept ng person, situation, interaction. So, this view suggests that behavior is not caused by global personality, personal trait, but by people's perceptions of themselves in a particular situation. So, just like what I have mentioned a while ago, so this theory is not more on personality traits, but it is focused on a particular situation in order to um, predict a person's behavior. So, let's say a student may have a history of being consensuous with regards to academic work but fail to be consensuous in cleaning his apartment or maintaining his car in working condition. So, in trade psychology, they must say that it is impossible to happen because if he is consensuous, then he must be consensuous in all situations. But looking at the concept of um, Walter again, it is okay if the student is not consensuous in maintaining his car in working condition because our behavior might change over time. To resolve the classical consistency paradox, Michel and Shoda propose a cognitive affective personality system. So, apparent inconsistency in a person's behavior are due to neither a random error nor solely to a situation. Rather, they are potentially predictable behaviors that reflect stable patterns of variations within a person. So it predicts that a person's behavior will change from situation to situations but in meaningful manner. Variation can be conceptualized in this framework if A then X but B then Y. So let's say um, kapag kasama mo yung parents mo masyado kang kiling sa kanya. Pero kapag yung friends mo naman yung mga kasama mo, hindi ka naman ganun. So kung mapapansin natin, um, nag-iba yung behavior natin dahil nag-iba rin yung sitwasyon. So, to solve the classical inconsistency paradox, Michelle and Shoda propose a cognitive affective personality system. Apparent inconsistencies in a person's behavior are due to neither a random error nor solely to the situation. Rather, they are potentially predictable behaviors that reflect stable patterns of variation within a person. It predicts a person's behavior will change from situation to situation but in a meaningful manner. So just like what I have mentioned a while ago, so this theory is more on the situation rather than the person's predictable personality traits. So variations can be conceptualized in this framework if A then B, but if F, but if B then Y. So when situation change, so does the behavior. So hindi pwede na maging magkaparehas yung behavior ng isang tao sa magkaibang Situation. Yun yung concept ng theory ni Walter Michel. So, in, pre in behavior prediction, it assumes that personality may have temporal stability and that behaviors may vary from situation to situation. So, ayun nga. Um, Ibang-iba yung paniniwala ni, uh, Mich ni Walter Michel sa, mga pan sa paniniwala ng mga trait psychologist. So, kung sa kanila, ang isang tao ay dinedetermine ng personal trait ang kanilang behavior dito nga sa theory ni Walter Michel ay situation naman ang nagpipredict ng behavior. So, it also assumes that predictions of behavior rest on a knowledge of how and when various cognitive affective units are activated. In order to predict behavior, so meron tayong tinatawag na cognitive affective units. 
The cognitive affective units include all those psychological, social, and physiological aspects of people that cause them to interact with their environment with the relatively stable patterns of variation. So the first uh, cognitive affective units is the encoding strategies. So this is a people's way of categorizing information received from external stimuli. People use cognitive processes to transform these stimuli into personal constructs including their self-concept, their views of other people, and their way of looking at the world. So different people encode the same events in different ways which account for individual differences in personal construct. So ang um, encoding strategies ito yung kung paano tayo magre-react sa mga external stimuli. Kung paano natin uh, i-interpret yung isang situation. So for instance, if you fail an exam, do you encode this as a failure or as an opportunity to improve? So, kapag ba ikaw ay um, bumagsak sa isang exam, ano bang iisipin mo na you are a failure kasi hindi ka pumasa? Or, sasabihin mo ba sa sarili mo na yun yung opportunity to do better? Na, na ipapaalala mo sa sarili mo na hindi ka failure but instead you need to do something para mas maging better yung result ng exam mo sa susunod na pagkuha mo. So, another one, if someone insults you, will you react angrily or you will ignore it? So, yung magiging response mo kapag ininsulto ka ng isang tao, ano ba yun? Magagalit ka ba sa kanya? Susuntokin mo ba siya? Or wala lang, i-ignore mo lang. Kasi para sa'yo, hindi ka naman talaga ganyan. So, that is the encoding strategy. So, our response is based on how we interpret or encode the situation. So, we need to be aware on how to encode or inter interpret because it partly determines our behavior. So, kinakailangan maging maingat ka talaga. Kasi, minsan kasi kapag hindi natin makontrol yung sarili natin, masyadong nadadala ng emotion. So, parang ang sama nung nagiging response natin. The way we encode is um, hindi ganoon pinag-isipan. Basta-basta lang siya. Kasi nabibigla tayo sa mga sitwasyon. So, we need to be aware on how to encode or interpret the situation. So, next we have the competence and self-regulatory strategies. So, this is how we behave. Depends on a part on the potential behaviors available to us. Our beliefs of what we can do our plans and strategies for enacting behaviors and our expectancies for success. So, let's say a person may feel confident in one subject but not in another because you may think that you are good in subject A but not in B. So, if a person has a low level of competence, then iisipin niya palagi yung idea na hindi siya magaling dun sa isang subject na yun kundi mas magaling siya doon sa isang subject. Okay, so that's why we have the self-regulatory system which enables them to plan, initiate, and maintain behaviors even when not environmental is weak or non-exist. So, with self-regulatory strategies, ito yung um, ano ba yung pwede natin gawin para maging uh, better tayo sa mga bagay. So, ano yung pwede natin gawin para mapataas yung level of com com competence natin? So, kapag inisip natin na hindi tayo magaling dito sa subject na to, ano yung pwede natin maging solution doon? Ano yung pwedeng strategies na gawin natin para mas maging better yung performance natin sa subject na yun? Okay? So, we have another one which is the goals and values. People do not react passively into situations but are active and goal-directed. So, people's subjective goals, values, and preferences represent a fourth cognitive affective unit. So, example, uh, two college students may have equal academic ability and also equal expectancy for success in graduate school. The first, however, places more value on entering the job market than going to graduate school 
while second chooses to go to graduate school than to pursue immediate career. So, magkaparehas man yung um, uh, goals din yung dalawa. Magkaiba naman yung value nyo. Magkaiba ko yung gugustuhin yung way to achieve the goals. Okay? So, although they have the same ability but differs in value, that's why we behave different in contrast with people around us. So, last one, we have the affective responses. So, Michelle sees affective responses as inseparable from cognitions and regards the interlocking cognitive affective units as more basic than other cognitive affective units. So, affective responses then do not exist in isolation. Not only are they inseparable from cognitive process, but also they influence each other cognitive affective units. So, example, I see myself as a competent psychology student and that pleases me. Okay, so, kapag nakikita mo yung sarili mo na magaling ka dun sa isang bagay na yun, natutuwa ka. Parang, bumibilib ka sa sarili mo. And then, the opposite naman, if I am not very good at mathematics and I don't like that. Okay, so, kapag daw sinabi mo na hindi ka magaling sa mathematics, ayoko nito. Ano yung pwede mong uh, gawin to make it uh, better? Para maging better yung performance mo dun sa isang subject na yun. So, from this example, you might think for a possible actions for you to be good at that subject. Ayun nga. So, kailangan mong magkaroon ng self-regulatory strategies. Ano yung pwede mong gawin para maging better? So, the next one is the critic of cognitive social learning theory, wherein cognitive social learning theory is attractive to those who value the rigors of learning theory and the speculative assumption that people are forward-looking cognitive beings. So, Rather and Michelle have both evolved learning theories for thinking, valuing, goal-directed humans rather than for laboratory animals. So, cognitive social learning theory's value rests on how it treats on the six criteria for a useful theory. So, the first criteria is, have the theories of Rother and Michelle spark a significant body of research? So, ito yung kung may kahalagahan ba yung um, pag-aaral na ginawa ni Rother at Michelle about sa cognitive social learning theory. So, the next one is, are cognitive social learning theories falsifiable? So, ito ba yung... Um, Kung yung research ba na ginawa ni Rother at Michelle about sa theory nila ay pwedeng i-prove na mali or hindi tama. Ayun. So, the third one is organizing knowledge. And the fourth one is, does cognitive social learning theory serve as a useful guide to action? So, eto naman kung may say-say ba yung research at theory na ginawa nila or magiging useless lang ito. So, the next one is, are the theories of Rother and Michelle internally consistent? So, kapag sinabi natin na internally consistent, um, it refers to the yung hindi pa bago-bago yung isang research. Um, consistent sila, um, hindi siya nakakalito at naayos yung pagkakagawa nito. So, the last one is, is cognitive social learning theory parsimonious? So, kapag sinabi natin na parsimonious, ito yung... Um, mura ba or hindi pa ganun kamahal yung na-spend para sa isang theory or research. So, ang next slide is all about the concept of humanity. So, Rother and Michelle both see people as a cognitive animals whose perceptions of events are more important than the event themselves. So, sinasabi dito na si Rother at Michelle naniniwala sila na ang mga tao ay mas pinahahalagan yung kanilang um, kung paano nila um i-perceive or kung paano nila naiintindihan ng isang bagay kumpara sa mga nangyayari talaga. So, sa concept of humanity, naniniwala si Rother at si Michelle na ang mga tao ay natuturuan para magkaroon ng mga maganda or mas mapapakinabang ang mga strategies para makamit nila yung kanilang goals. Naniniwala rin sila na ang mga tao ay um, nakadepende sa isang sitwasyon or sa kanilang environment kung paano sila magbe-behave at kung paano nila ipapakita yung kanilang personality. So, in summary, cognitive social learning theory views people of forward-looking, purposive, unified, cognitive, affective, and social animals 
who are capable of evaluating present experiences and anticipating future events on the basis of goals they have chosen for themselves.